All right, hello everyone. It's everyone's favorite time of year, spoiler season. Uh, for those of you that just want to see all four of the cards I'm going to be spoiling today, you can jump to this timestamp down below to see all four cards. But for those of you who want to come along for the ride, uh, I think it's going to be worth it. These are going to be some fun cards, and I think kind of worth thinking about as a full package. So as the title says, uh, this is a full set of Trojan or Trojan support cards. And so of course it makes sense to talk about them in the context of this new Shaper ID, Arasana Roja Nehu. Uh, this is a 4515 Shaper ID. And I think it does something that we haven't seen in quite a while for Shaper, uh, which is a pseudo fifth click to install Shaper identity. So we've seen other kind of shaper IDs that kind of give you some kind of value. You know, lat is a classical example, uh, but Arasana to me most closely is going to kind of resemble Haley, where you could install cards from your grip uh, under a certain condition. Arasana's condition is very different, I think, than basically any other shaper runner we've seen so far. This ability is just saying that at any paid ability window, during a run, you can install a program from your grip, paying its install costs. Use this ability only once per turn and only during a run, and when that run ends, trash that program if it is not a Trojan. And so clearly there's some strong desire to play good Trojans. Now, uh, by the end of the video, for reasons that will become clear, I'm gonna talk about a bunch of other currently in standard Trojans. I think it makes sense if you're thinking from the perspective of Null Signal that if you're going to publish this new ID, you want to make sure there's some exciting new Trojans to talk about. So let's go to the first one. This is Sachi. Uh, it is a one cost, one MU, criminal, one influence Trojan. It is, of course, a program. It says install only on a piece of ice. Whenever a host ice is rezzed or derezzed, gain three credits. This is a nice, simple little program. It uh, allows you to run aggressively early and get some value back out of that run. This card kind of reminds me of something like Cash, uh, where that was a one influence, one cost program that gained three credits and that Shapers could turn into some additional value. It didn't see a lot of play into Criminal, uh, but you know, we hopefully there's some more support for Criminal. Uh, I think by the time this video is out, though I'm not 100% sure, we will hopefully have a better idea of what criminals can do with this card. I think the play pattern you can see the most with Saucy, if you see it in Arasana decks, is not going to be installing it with the ID ability because there's a tricky timing there where you can't install this in response to the corp resing. You have to have this card on the card before the corp goes and reses it. But I could see a world where you install this and then make a run on that server and you're basically asking the corp, do you want me to give, give me an access? Or do you want me to gain three credits and then be able to use those three credits to respond to the ice you're going to res? Um, I think this card is a little bit niche, but Cash saw some really important play in particular types of engine decks, in particular Aesop's Pawn Shops engines. And there's no reasons you couldn't use this with Aesop's as well for basically a very similar value in Arasana. Um, and, you know, if you start splashing some D-Res cards, um, then this could become a powerhouse and shaper. Or if you play some D-Res and Crim, you can, you know, get your low stack up and running and uh, end up in a really fun spot. Um, I asked rules about this interaction because it was one of the first, th it's always gonna be one of those interactions you ask about whenever there's a Trojan. Um, what happens when Saki is, Sachi is on a magnet? Uh, so if Sachi is on a magnet and the magnet is rezzed, Sachi's ability gets blanked by the magnet before it can trigger. Because basically, uh, you know, as part of the process, you res the magnet and then card abilities go, okay, now I can check to see if I have fire, but magnet by that point has already blanked it. However, when you derez a magnet, Sachi does fire because the card gets derez and then you check to see what cards are available to fire off of that derez trigger. And Sachi is there saying, hey, a card just got derez that I'm hosted on. Here's your money. So for those of you immediately thinking about derez decks, I think this is a really good tool. I think even in aggressive shaper decks, this potentially has some real potential. And I think those aggressive shaper decks are going to really enjoy this next card, Slap Vandal. 
So this is a program, Icebreaker, AI, and Trojan. It is base six strength. It's like mo like every other Trojan so far. It says install only on a piece of ice. It says interface, one credit, break one subroutine on host ice, use this ability only once per encounter. So this beautiful Adam Doyle piece uh, is, I think, going to be a really interesting enabler for our Asana. It's uh, not as strong as Botulus in a lot of cases because it costs you a credit, so it will come down for the same cost, basically, and has limited strength. The upside being that you can use it as many times as you want in a turn. And the other really nice upside now with Arasana is that you can kind of play this as a gotcha to the corp. You can just run with a naked board, and then if there's going to be a subroutine that really messes up your day, you get to slap down this slap vandal, make your, make your break the most important subroutine, and then move on from there. So I think this is really interesting. We've, between this Shaper ID and this Slap Vandal, we've got some really compelling reasons to run early as Shaper. Now, you know, this also is gonna do a really nice job against gear check ice. So Ice Wall, Enigma, maybe a little bit less so. Um, I was just playing a draft the day before recording this. And, you know, if we ever see a card like Quandre again, Slap Vandal seems like a great early game solution to that. This also isn't a bad card to pull off of an SMC, for example, because it is so cheap to install and handles the ice exactly that you need to right there. Um, and so I think this has some potential, even though it's got some real limitations. I think, you know, it looks like this card is kind of acknowledging that um, some icebreaker tools are, are less healthy than others. And this has, I think, a really strong safety valve on it. So it may not see play or like it's not going to be your primary breaker in the same way that something that some other kind of Trojans and icebreaker tools have been in the last couple of sets. But I think this card is still really important. And if you start thinking about stuff like, oh, I need to make, I want to make high impact runs, suddenly Slap Vandal is a really nice way to cheaply land early game high impact runs. And that's where it's going to probably shine the most. Um, so these are actually the two Trojans I have, and the remaining two cards are Trojan support cards. And so I'm gonna go in a slightly, uh, I'm gonna go to another icebreaker next. This is Umbrella. Umbrella is an icebreaker decoder weapon subtype, and it says this program can only interface with ice hosting a Trojan. It says interface, two credits, break up to three code gate subroutines. If at least one subroutine was broken this way, each player may draw one card and it has base strength of five. So this to me is super interesting. I, this card can do some really scary things. In particular, we have Egret in standard right now. So Egret and Umbrella will break any ice in the game, I believe, um, unless that ice blanks or otherwise cannot host Trojans. Um, so that's pretty darn impactful. Uh, the draw subroutine, I've been informed by rules, the runner player makes the decision as to whether or not to draw a card, and then the court player makes a decision as to whether or not to draw a card. And maybe that is a downside that makes you not want to run Umbrella, right? Uh, because you are actually giving your opponent tempo by doing it. And it makes every single code gate a two card combo to break. So that might be a significant cost. But I think Umbrella has some real upsides. Basically being, I install this card for three and then I get to break basically every code gate in the game and some non-code gates if I set up my rig right for just two credits, this can get really good. And you know, an example card that we're gonna talk about a lot is Cubon. If I put Cubon and Umbrella on a piece of ice uh, on a code gate, I run that code gate, I break it with Umbrella I get two credits back and I draw a card, and maybe my opponent draws a card as well. That's prob That sounds to me pretty good, especially if I can make that run high value. Or let's say that ice is on R&D. All of a sudden, I can now run R&D, and if the corp wants to keep drawing, I get to keep accessing more and more cards. Or maybe I've lined things up so I'm doing this on a conduit run. I think Umbrella has some real potential. Um, 
it's going to depend a lot on what ice is out there, what you can, you know, if it's worth playing cards like Egret to make this card do more work, and if you can kind of afford the little bit of clunkiness. It's got a really high base strength, which is quite relevant. Um, it's going to require some MU. You know, breaking two code gates on a single server means that you're dedicating three MU to this umbrella, uh, which is going to make it quite something. Uh, means, you know, that's a lot for a single breaker. So I wouldn't be too surprised if umbrella doesn't end up, you know, revolutionizing the whole shaper breaker suite. But I think it does have a potential to really do some damage in the right meta under the right circumstances. I think it's pretty cool to see an icebreaker that actually gives the runner tempo for interacting with the corp. That might end up being scary. I can definitely see worlds where it ends up being a little bit too strong. Uh, but I, I also think the MU cost of playing with a lot of Trojans is going to be impactful. Now, of course, I should mention uh, Lilypad, the console that is all, has also was spoiled with Arasana. Uh, that's clearly going to help. 2MU, and now you're drawing potentially multiple cards a turn off of a single click to make a run. I mean, this is like some really good engine stuff. Now, the biggest thing missing from that engine is some kind of econ gain. And that's honestly what I'm really excited about. Of all the cards I'm spoiling, this is maybe my favorite. This is Urban Art Vernissage. It says it's a, jo a resource job ritzy. When your turn begins, you may add one installed non-virus Trojan to your grip. If you do place two credits on this resource, you can spend hosted credits to install cards. This card, I think, is super, super interesting because it, to me, reads like an attempt to make a brand new Shaper engine. There have been a couple of historical Shaper engine decks that have kind of defined what the Shaper archetype is capable of doing. The very first one was Magnum Opus Kit, I think, more or less historically. The next one was Prepaid Voice Pad, Kate, and this was the most successful and dominant sh Shaper archetype to the point that, arguably, it made FFG implement a restricted list. And then we got Aesop's Pawn Shop, which was kind of the Shaper Econ Engine for the back half of the FFG lifespan and the beginning part of the NSG lifespan. But once Haley rotated, that went away, and the replacement was has been some variation of kind of drip engines with cards like Rizeki and Pad Tap. Um, and you know, there was it seemed like there were some attempts to make a power counter engine in Borealis, but it ended up missing the mark and basically just being Endurance is a one-card engine. And I think Urban Urban Art Vers Vernissage reminds me the most of Aesop's Pawn Shop, right? It interacts with installed cards and it gains you credits at the start of your turn by taking an action. Now with uh, Aesop's Pawn Shop, that is trashing a card. So fundamentally, it, is, it gets the most utility out of a card being installed, having an impact, and then being used up. And so it was the strongest with cards like David and Cyber Cipher and Lady uh, and the aforementioned Cash. All of those cards were single use and then went away. And I think it's kind of interesting when you think about Sachi and Slap Vandal, how those can both be a similar single use and then done kind of programs. And so now you get to spend one credit, install them, gain some value out of them, either by breaking an ice or gaining three credits, and then you get to return them to your grip and put two credits on this that you get to use to install cards. So, like, I am super, super excited about this as an engine. I think it's super interesting that it says non-virus. That clearly means that, you know, while you probably still want to run Botulus and maybe even Tranquilizer and Arasana, you know, Asachi Tranquilizer deck sounds pretty fun, you don't get to actually return those cards to your hand, the viruses to your hand. Those are stuck on the board. So instead you want to use other Trojans. And so this card, I think, is the one that to me is going to define whether or not the Trojan Shaper archetype can succeed. Because this card is such a potentially powerful engine. Now, two credits per turn on its own is not probably enough to build a whole engine around. We can see Anarch will do often Keiko Paladin. Um, 
And the important thing to note there is that Keiko Paladin are sort of a uh, amplifier of the other cards you're going to run. And so Urban Art Vernissage has to be a similar amplifier, I think, to provide some kind of relevant power. The advantage over Keiko Paladin, obviously, which can drip effectively for two credits a turn, is this is one card that when you do something with another card can drip for two credits a turn. So to some extent, it has that higher power ceiling. Now it's much more selective in what it can interact with. So let's pull up all of the Trojans that are currently legal and that have been spoiled so far. So obviously we have Sachi and Slap Vandal, uh, and then we also have Chisel, Botulus, Egret, Flux Capacitor, Hush, Ika, Cubon, and Tranquilizer. And also, technically, I guess, Trapano. Now, a bunch of these are viruses. So if we just ignore all of these, we have a pretty small set. The two that obviously stand out are Flux Capacitor and Cubon. These we get to install for zero. And if we're doing this with Arasana, we get to make a run, install these cards without spending a click, and then we get to return them to our hand and make two credits. And if we can get value out of that power counter by maybe, say, charging up an environmental testing that also got a counter from installing that flux capacitor, or very obviously with a Cubon, passing the ice, now suddenly our Cubon that we get to clicklessly install on a piece of ice, if we make it past that ice, it's going to net us out four credits. That's a really exciting value. I'm hoping that this is enough to make our Asana and this Trojan-based Shaper like a real deck, because I think it would be a really interesting run-focused Shaper build, where you run to get to make accesses and to set up an engine that is paying you off and keeping you in the game. And I think with the rotation of hard-hitting news, there's actually some real potential to not just lose the game when you try and make a run on turn one and turn two to get your urban art vernissage up and running. Um, I think something really important to note, you can spend these host credits to install cards. Any type of card you can install with urban art vernissage. So you can make that run, uh, install your cubon, make two credits, next turn bounce those two credits and use the two credit, you know, use the all four of those credits to install a something like a Earthrise Hotel the following turn. I think that's going to make this engine piece really powerful, and I'm excited to see what people do with it. I think it has some real potential because one of the other differences, obviously, from Aesop's is that this lets you reuse the card. So you use Slap Vandal to poke at their remote early, make the corp ice up particularly hard, and then when they do that, you get to bounce the Slap Vandal back and return it and push it somewhere else. So you can start attacking their centrals when they've iced up the remotes. So if Corps end up in a ice-heavy game plan, I think Urban Art Vernissage has some really interesting payoffs. I can't wait to see what this does in play. Um, it is, I you know, I, last cycle I was also excited for the Shaper cards. I think I'm also very excited for the Shaper cards in this cycle, and I'm hoping they're going to hit much closer to a balanced mark than the kind of general uh, experience was with the last one. But with that said, that's all of the four cards. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please give a like and subscribe, and uh, hopefully you've been watching my daily cast where we review spoilers uh, throughout the week, and given the season is almost over, where there's uh, not much point left, um, here are all four cards. Thank you all for watching. Thanks to NSG for providing you with these spoilers, and I hope to see you out slinging cards, running nets in the near future. Interestingly, if we've installed Sachi before, uh, before we go and make the run, then we can respond. We can spend the three credits we get from Sachi, Saki, Sachi. Oh my goodness! We can spend the three credits we get from Sachi.